captain speaking. I'm asking you all to get your lifeboats in order, stocked with everything you might need as a precautionary measure. The ship is taking on water. You have the option of not preparing your lifeboat. If you have faith that the people who crashed the ship will be able to fix it before it goes under, please take this warning seriously. The part about the lifeboats, not the politicians that have to fix it. Well, we're eight weeks from default and your elected officials that have your best interest at heart would like to raise the debt ceiling up to $16.7 trillion. Now, of course, this is just so they have a little bit of wiggle room in order to get the finances of the country in order without us having to default for the first time. I mean, we're only going from 14.3 to 16.7. We were just at 8.5 in 2006. So a doubling of the national debt's not really that bad in the last five to six years. And when we're at 16.7, in a year from now probably, because they'll probably get things done in the last few minutes after the wrestling match is over between the Democrats and Republicans, who ultimately have the same goal which is not your best interest. Uh, when that gets over with, we'll probably be about three or four percentage points away from trillion dollar yearly interest payments on the national debt. So that right there is enough concern to get your life boat in order. <laughs> but today I also want to talk about a few other things. I want to talk about the COMEX Physical Silver dropping to fresh all-time lows. On April 20th, there were 41 million ounces of physical silver in the COMEX warehouse registered for delivery. We are now at 28.8 million ounces. We've dropped 30% in the past six weeks. At this rate, the warehouse will be empty in five months. I'll let you guess what will happen to the price of silver when there's no more silver in the warehouse and people request physical delivery. So the bottom line on the, on the COMEX is that it could actually be the tipping point between the physical reality. Oh, that was nice. <laughs> Just cut me off, buddy. It might actually be the physical, the tipping point between the physical reality and the paper illusion. So we'll have to keep a, you know, keep an eye on that. The dollar today hit a new all-time low against the first Swiss franc. It now takes one dollar and nineteen cents to buy one Swiss franc. To put this in perspective. It took forty cents to buy a Swiss franc in 1985, and it took eighty cents to buy a Swiss franc in 2004 so you know that right there is telling <laughs> you can see where that's been headed over the last 25 years anyhow um, also today wanted to mention the fact that the feds balance sheet hit a new all-time record today 2.77 trillion now about a trillion dollars of that is mortgage-backed securities and recently it's been growing as part of QE2 they're buying the Treasury bonds and with electronic money they're clicking on the the number keys on the pad and creating money out of nothing and they're buying assets so that 2.7 trillion are assets on their balance sheet it was created with money out of nothing um, so that's no 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 reason for concern there either and um, checking in on QE2, which is supposed to end in June, we have gross domestic product was growing at 3.1% fourth quarter 2010, and its first quarter of 2011 was growing at 
So you can see how well that worked out. Uh, getting a little boost to the economy there on the downside, thanks to QE2. Um, stay tuned for QE3. May come in disguise, as a matter of fact. And um, let's see here. The good news today is that our debt to GDP ratio, you know, the amount of money the country owes versus what it's producing and all the goods and services is only about 100%. So it's, it's around even now. Where after World War II, is 121% debt to what we were producing. So uh, it was a lot higher. However, the negative side of that is we actually produced things back in the 19, late 40s and early 50s, and it wasn't as easy to run around your house and find things made in China. We now have a 70% consumer-based economy, which it depends on you and I borrowing money to buy things we can't afford to keep the amount of, to keep this phony economy rolling down the road. So, um, anyway, that's the good news for today. One last thing I wanted to mention was. A trip I made to a place called Fort Knox in Alameda uh, to buy some silver this uh, past week. Had a, a nice conversation with the owner and I said, wow, it must be kind of exciting having this business. I think he's been in business over 30 years. He says, no, actually it's quite frustrating when you got to wait seven weeks to get silver so your clients could come in and buy it. Um, he's, he was, you know... <clears throat> Seem quite frustrated with the fact that the silver market is so tight he can't even get any. Um, and then I mentioned about we started talking about the Comex, and I said, "Well, um, are you, are you? I guess you're familiar with Jeff Christian of the CPM Group mentioning 100 to one paper to physical silver in a testimony last March 2010 at the CFTC hearings." And he says he started laughing at me. He's like, "What?" 100 to 1? Dude, you're crazy. Why don't we try 1,000 or 10,000 to 1? 